So the vice presidential debate, surprisingly, set some records. Pence-Harris debate draws more than 50 million viewers. 50 million. 26% spike from 2016. I don't know how many of you guys remember that, but we had Tim Kaine and Mike Pence. I was honestly astonished at how Tim Kaine came out of that debate looking worse than Mike Pence, who's like a really, really extreme fundamentalist Christian and a corporatist. And somehow Tim Kaine looked worse. He he was more obnoxious and more annoying. Tim K uh, or uh, Mike Pence was a lot more composed, even though he's a super fake politician. But he did come across feeling better than Tim Kaine did. I was amazed at that. Now, the Kamala Harris debate, honestly, a little bit different. So, um, according to the ABC poll, 51% of viewers said Harris won. 48% said Pence won. According to the CNN Snap poll, you had 59% say Harris won. 38% say Pence won. Another thing is, you could see that Pence's numbers were unchanged in terms of likability from before the debate to after the debate. And uh, Kamala's likability numbers went up a little bit from before the debate to after the debate. Now, ultimately, though, I, I do have to say, I think this debate is largely a Rorschach test. Because the sense you got is, okay, this isn't a Trump-Biden thing. This isn't like a Trump-Hillary thing. This is the return to normalcy that people talk about. You have two very, very polished, talking point machine, robotic politicians doing their stump speech to each other. It was almost not a debate. It was just like, let's say the things that we've been coached to say over and over in a vacuum, and it's just incidental that you're sitting next to me, my opponent. So, but again, in many ways, it's a Rorschach test because the Republicans go into it and go out of it saying, yeah, Pence won. The Democrats go into it and go out of it and say, yeah, uh, Kamala won. But really, for the Democrats, it was more the Democrats said that and the Independents said that. Whoever is persuadable, that tiny number, did side more with Kamala. So really, at the end of the day, Kamala did everything that she had to do in the sense that she did no harm. And Biden already has a giant lead. So if all she did was do no harm, she kind of won. And that's really what we saw. Um, there were moments that annoyed me from both of them. The thing about Pence that annoyed me is he never answered the questions. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Everything was obfuscating and dodging, and he would do his polite little politician shtick, but he would just take, take it in whatever direction he wanted to. Now, I get it, he chose to do that, but you come across really obnoxious and annoying when you do that. Like, if there's anything I could get across to people in terms of how to make people like you in a format like this is just be straightforward and answer the question and never use more words than you have to. Whatever you're trying to say, say it as quickly as possible, as to the point as possible, and as direct as possible, and answer the questions. And on that alone, people will go, I kind of like that. I kind of like that guy. Look at what he's doing. He's just getting right to it. But they do the opposite. They're as wordy as possible. And in the case of Pence, he just never answered any questions. It was ridiculous. Um, so he was annoying for that reason. There were moments that other people were giving Kamala credit for that made me want to stab my eye with a fork. Like when she would do the, excuse me, I'm talking. Uh, uh. <laughs> it was just so smug. The other one that really got under my skin was when she was asked the question about court packing. Instead of giving a direct answer, she did this weird thing where she ended up attacking Trump for appointing X number of judges. I don't know how many judges he's appointed. Probably hundreds. And she said like, and none of them were black. She, you're asked if you're in favor, if you and Biden are in favor of adding seats to the court. And you end up saying, well, Trump put hundreds of judges on the court and none of them are black. How dare you? It's just like, first of all, pump the brakes a little bit with the identity politics. You're pouring it on too hard. Second of all, it wasn't related to the question. <laughs> like, answer the question. Biden's been dodging. Kamala's been dodging. I think the idea is they don't want to piss off the left more on this question. 
Um, but listen, we all know, you know and I know, they ain't going to pack the court. They're not going to do it. I wish they would. I wish they would. They should, but they're not going to do it. But they're dancing around the question, I think, so as to not piss off the left more. Um, but the strongest point of the debate, um, honestly, was, I think, Kamala attacking Pence for the basic Republican stuff, like the Trump tax cuts. Um, and Pence couldn't stop lying. He would keep insisting that Biden wants to raise taxes on working class families when Biden has been crystal clear. If you make $400,000 or less, you're not getting a tax increase. Um, so now you could even argue with that from a left wing perspective, but B Pence and the Republicans, they just lie nonstop about Joe Biden and what he supports. And it was also annoying when, you know, Kamala would be like, Joe Biden is not going to ban fracking. You would think, the way the Democrats talk about that issue, you would think 80% of the country doesn't want to ban fracking. When you look in the areas that they're talking about, like Pennsylvania, it's like a 50-50 issue. It's always around 50-50. But the Republicans go on the offense and say, like, you want to ban fracking. And then the Democrats run away from these ideas, which that's not that extreme if you were to say, yes, let's ban fracking. I get it. Jobs are really important. But we have plans to create millions of jobs. Like the Green New Deal, which Biden is also not for, by the way. <laughs> so, like, you know, she runs away from the fracking thing. You could say, hey, she, nothing she could do. That's all Biden. True. Green New Deal, she has to run away from as well. But yes, you do get the sense that in these debates, it's a lot like what Internet Hippo tweeted brilliantly a while back, um, where he said, like, the debate is going to be Trump accusing Biden of wanting to do a bunch of cool shit and Biden running away from it. It's like Trump being like, you want to give a lot more people health care, don't you? And Biden's like, no, I do not. I promise you, under my administration, nobody knew would get health care. <laughs> like, that's really what, what it feels like in a lot of these debates. But anyway, um, yes, overall, I think Kamala edged it out. She did no harm, which, you know, is all she had to do. The onus was on Pence. And normally these things don't matter, let's be honest, electorally. But I do think in this case it might be a little bit different. Simply because Donald Trump is old and fat and he has COVID and Biden is old and his brain is melting. So they're really old, man. They are. They are. And they're not old and healthy. They're old and they have issues. So, you know, perhaps a lot of people tuned into this debate thinking, this is the real, this is the real presidential debate. Yes, they're technically VP, but they might not be. They could become president pretty quickly, if we're being honest. So maybe this one's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, speaking to my mom about it, and I always use her as like a good example of your normie American. Um, she actually said she liked the fact that it didn't feel as chaotic and crazy as Trump. And she actually liked the fact that it did feel like a return to normalcy with the polished politicians. Now, there are people out there who disagree with that. But yes, let's be honest. At this point in time, the country is tired. The country's beaten down. We've seen nothing but chaos and mayhem nonstop for years now. And so there are a lot of people who just want to press pause. Now, when we return back to normal, people will immediately realize, oh my God, normal sucked. Because <laughs> it's all of Trump's policies without the mean tweets and the show of it, right? So I think once we get to a place where we're back to normal, people will realize normal was horrendous, which is why we had Trump in the first place. But as of right now, I do think the mood of the country is more in line with what my mom was saying. And um, people want that People want to take that deep breath and just feel like they could tune out for a little bit. And perhaps this is what this debate kind of made us feel like. And um, it was interesting, but a lot of it was exactly what I expected. And I don't think it changes much overall in terms of how the voting is going to go.